Hi all you Steeler fans, this is section 9.8 which is factor by grouping um, and we're doing four term polynomials. Um, so far we factored uh, three term trinomials but now we're going to show you how to do four term polynomials. Um, in the book it will give you some trinomials and it'll say factor by grouping. Um, I don't want to waste time so if you want to see how to do that you can look at the examples in the book um, but I would just suggest solving them by cross method or box method. Okay, so here's a four-term polynomial. What you want to do is cut it in half. And notice I left the sign in front, um, sign to the right of the line. Okay, and what I want to do is find common factors out of these two. And I can see I can pull a 5 out of both of these, and I can pull a x cubed out of both of them. So that's my common factor that I can pull out. If I factor out the 5x cubed, and when I divide this, I'm left with an x, drop down the plus sign. When I divide this, I'm left with a 4. Okay? And then to the right side, I can see that I can pull a 6 out of both terms. And if I pull a positive 6 out, notice I'm taking on the plus 6, I'm left with, if I divide this, I get an x, and if I divide this, I get a 4. And if you notice, whatever is in the parentheses is the same. And for this chapter, when you start factoring this out, this needs to be the same. If this inside of the parentheses are not the same, you did something wrong. Okay. Then what I need to do is, in the same way, if I had, I could pull the x plus 4 out, or I can factor out, if you think of it this way, if this is just two terms this way, I can factor out a x plus 4 from both of these. In the same way I pulled out a 5x cubed from here and a 5x cubed from these two terms, I can pull an x plus 4 out of both of these. So I can pull these two out, and if I pull out the x plus 4 in parentheses, think of it as parentheses, I'm left with 5x cubed plus 6. And you just factored a four-term polynomial. Okay, if you didn't see it, I'll do another one, and I did one with a negative over here on purpose. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to cut it down in half. I know it's a little crooked. I need to pull out a common factor. I can see I can pull a four, and I can pull two n's out, so n squared. And if I pull a four n squared out on this side, I'm left with n plus, and if I divide this, a two which means I need to make sure I have an n plus 2 in parentheses here. So I'm going to pull a negative 5 down here, and if I divide by a 5 here and a 5 here, I'm left with n, and then it looks like it's a minus here, but because I'm pulling out a negative 5 over here on this side, this needs to be a plus, because if you think about distributing this back in, it needs to come out to 5n minus 10. So that's why this, if I'm pulling out a negative 5 here, it actually becomes a plus 2. Okay? So that's one of the tricky ones as far as having a negative over here on that side. And again, you can see that the n plus 2 is the same. So now when I factor it out, if I think about factoring it out, I can pull an n plus 2 out of both of these pull those out, and I'm left with n plus 2 times, and I'm left with these two, 4n squared minus 5. And that's how you factor a four-term polynomial. Okay, I got a couple more examples here. And this one we're going to factor completely, which means there's a little bit more to it than the other ones. So right off the bat, I need to see, can I pull anything out of any all of the four terms. Okay. If I look back at this one example here, there's nothing common in all of these. There's no number because this is a 4, 8, 5, and a 10. There's nothing I can pull out of there. And all of them don't have ends, so I can't pull any ends out. So there's nothing in common on all four of those. Whereas over here in these examples, I can pull something out. So what I want to do is pull something out first. And if I pull something out, I can see I can pull a 2 out of each of these, since they're all um, even numbers, and I can actually pull 1p out of each one. 
Okay, and if I pull a 2p out over here, I'm going to use brackets for this. I'm left with 6p to the third plus 5p squared minus, drop this down, 18p minus 15. Okay, all I did was divide each one of these and drop it down. Now I'm going to cut it in half over here and I'm going to drop my 2p over here. When I look for my common denominators here, the only thing I can see is a p squared out of both of these. So if I pull a p squared out here, I'm left with 6p plus 5. Over here I can pull a 3 out, I can see that. So I'm going to pull out a negative 3. And if I pull that out, I get a 6p. And again, because I'm pulling out a negative 3, this changes to a plus 5. Okay, and again, to double check, just try and distribute this back in. Negative 18p minus 15, is what, which is what I want. Okay, so that's just a quick check to make sure your signs are good. As well as the fact that these two parentheses are still the same. Okay, so what, what I can do now is I can pull the 6p plus 5 out of both of these. And I'm left with 2p, 6p plus 5 times, and I'm left with this here and this here. So p squared minus 3. And if you notice, when I took this 2p out here, I kept it on I kept it going down so don't forget that 2p that you pulled out first okay so you still end up with these two binomials but you still have this that you pulled out first that you factored out first okay so over here I'm gonna look at what I can pull out first again and I can see that I can pull a 2 out from the numbers and I can't pull a 4 because of this 6 and I can pull two x's out so I can pull x squared, x squared, x squared. Okay. I'm going to move it just a little more this way. If I pull a 2x squared out here and I put brackets, I'm left with 2x squared, or I'm sorry, 2x to the fifth, minus 8x to the third, minus 3x squared, plus 12. Okay, now I'm going to cut it down the middle here, again, leave my 2x squared, put the brackets, and I can pull a 2x cubed out of each of these. So if I do a 2x cubed, I'm left with x squared, oops, forgot the 2x cubed, pull a 2x cubed out, I'm left with x squared minus 4. Okay. Over here I can pull a 3 out. And um, so if I pull a negative 3 out, I get an x squared minus 4. And the reason why, again, when I take this negative 3 this way, it has to equal to a positive 12. So that's why I need a negative 4. So again, another kind of a tricky thing. Make sure to change that to a negative 4. Okay. And also the fact that these need to be the same. Okay, so I'm going to drop down my 2x squared. I'm going to factor out my x squared minus 4. And I'm going to put it here, x squared minus 4. And then I'm going to drop down what's left, 2x cubed minus 3. Okay, but I'm not done yet. It says factor completely. And if you look at that, what else can you factor? So think about that and look at it. What else can you factor? And if you saw the difference of squares, you are correct. This becomes x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, so your answer actually would be 2x squared times x plus 2 times x minus 2 times 2x cubed minus 3. So once you factor down, you need to make sure to see, can you factor this anymore? Can you factor this anymore? And this one, yes, you can, because it's a difference of squares. 
Okay, that is section 9.8. I hope you have a great day or a great evening. Go Steelers!